So let's get this straight, man. You know, Jerron Boots in this says he sent the offer. Yeah. <laughs> Brian Norman Jr. says it wasn't enough and they counter offered. Yeah. Amantis Danionis says he doesn't deal with low ball offers. Yeah. Meanwhile, Mario Barrio says he's fighting Pacquiao. Yeah. Y'all smell that? I smell duck. If I tell you I'm good, probably you will say I'm supposed to. If I tell you I'm no good, you know one line. <laughs> Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Dr. PG and GM. Praise God to get money back for another YouTube video. Banger, man. Yes, sir. Yes, man. I know what time it is. The doctor's in the house, man. So check this out, man. So it's been, it has been revealed recently, you know, a couple of hours ago, that Brian Norman Jr. and Jerron Boots Ennis are no longer in negotiations. <laughs> for a, a upcoming fight, you know, a, a potential unification match at the welterweight division 147. In fact, you know, Brian Norman Jr. Has, has just announced that he has a fight against Derek Cuevas, you know, on November 8th on the undercard of Keyshawn Davis versus Gustavo Lemos, man. And, and you know, I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, he's ducking Stan, he, he's, he's ducking Jerome Boots in this and- Shut up, bitch! And you know, uh, he outpriced himself, man. I don't know how much. Ooh. I guess the birds say he ducking too. <laughs> but yeah, man, I, I, I don't know how much is, uh, is uh, will satisfy his evaluation. I don't think we do. I don't think any of us know, you know what I'm saying? So before we say that he outpriced himself, um, I think people should be compensated how they want to be compensated, you know what I'm saying? Who am I to judge somebody's value? Of course, people can outprice themselves, but to act like we know the ins and outs is just crazy and disingenuous and, and, and just a flat out lie, you know? And, and um, you know, because these fighters, unfortunately, they do take a great risk. Um, and unfortunately, um, they could get severely injured, you know, seriously injured and sometimes fatal injury, if not a chronic injury, like uh, like shout out to, um, you know, uh, Pritchard Cologne, you know, and and, 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 and shout out to um, um, Anna Gucci, who just passed away in January. He's 23. He succumbed to his injury. Shout out to Adonis Stevenson, who suffered brain, uh, a chronic brain injury after fighting Alexander Vosdick. So these things happen to be oblivious to that. It's just, you know, it, 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 it's just wrong. You know, that's all it is. So I'm not saying that these fighters still can't price themselves out, but there's nothing wrong with what you deserve. And it's just so funny that we're going to be quick to call uh, Brian Norman Jr. a duck, even though he's been the most willing. He's demonstrated the most willingness to fight him, even if you want to say it's disingenuous or not. He's still at least engaged in conversation. Meanwhile, we have Stanley Onis, who's basically telling you the same thing. Eddie Hearn sent him an offer that he was unhappy with. Oh, oh. So he basically say that it did not meet his valuation for himself either. So Stanley Onis is telling you that, but you don't care about that though, right? Yeah. And when Brian, but when Brian Norman says the same thing, that the offer didn't match what they expected, then all of a sudden he's a duck. And now on the flip side, you know, Jerome Boussina said that he sent he sent the offer and um, and I believe him. And I believe that he tried to fight uh, uh, Brian Norman as well. And I also believe that Brian Norman was willing to fight if they could negotiate the terms and come to an agreement. But they couldn't, you know, and, and Jerome Boussina, I think he's willing to fight him. But people are going to say that, oh, Eddie Hearn, is he's under the Eddie Hearn protection program because they didn't really want to make the fight happen or else they would have paid that little bit of money over the top, that little bit extra on the top. Well, I think they have their valuations, too. And they're saying that, hey, man, I'm not going to over overpay for something that I don't necessarily need right now. I could go try to get it with Stanley Onis, but you're going to say that Boots, uh, he's never fought anybody, which is kind of true. He hasn't fought any great high caliber opponents, but if Brian Norman wasn't a champion, then you wouldn't know about him anyway. So it's like, uh, I just, I just think it's funny. I, I think that these guys, and girls are all willing to fight. It's just sometimes things don't work out, you know, but what I think is even funnier and crazier is that Mario Barrios is sitting there as the most decorated champion at 147. Yeah. And no one's saying that he should fight Boots. Where, where, where's, where's the outrage for that? You know, where's the outrage for Stanley Onis and Boots? Where's the outrage for that? What about the fact that Stanley Onis has worked with PPC and he's listed as a PPC fighter 
and and Barrios is with PBC, and that fight hasn't been made yet. So no one's calling for uh, 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 Stanionis and, and and Boots either. I mean, Stanionis and Barrios either, what? or Stanionis and Boots, or Barrios and Boots, what? or or Barrios and Norman, or Stanionis and Norman. You know, so if we keep the same energy, you know, um, then I think a lot of these fights would happen sooner. You know, uh, especially at the welterweight division. But no, we're focused on Brian Norman, who's the least experienced of the champions, who was the underdog in his last fight when he beat Giovanni Santillan to become champion, and also, not to mention, that was his first scheduled 12-round fight. Was his last fight. Oh, oh. <laughs> Three fights ago, the male was in an eight-rounder and a 10-rounder. I'm not making any excuses, man. The mosquitoes out here vicious. I'm not making any excuses, but it is what it is. So I don't think that Brian Norman is ducking because he's scared. Could he be a little uh, is he not as adamant to fight Boots? Maybe. Is Boots not as adamant to fight Brian Norman? Maybe you could make the argument because then Brian Norman would have took a little less or or Boots would have offered a little more. You know what I'm saying? So you can make an argument for both. But I think this whole thing about jumping on people's necks, you know, um, about them not fighting, man, we got to we gotta acknowledge that sometimes these fights take a little bit more than we, than we, than we acknowledge. You know what I'm saying? It's not as simplistic as we think. It may not be as complicated as we think, but it's definitely not as simplistic as we think. <laughs> and by the way, I almost forgot to mention, man, Derek Cuevas, yeah, the guy who uh, Brian Norman Jr. is making his first defense against, yeah, he's ranked number seven. Number seven in the WBO rankings. So what's wrong with that? People are going to be mad, but what, what, what's wrong with that? He's making his first defense for a title that he recently received being the underdog against a guy who's ranked in the top ten. <laughs> People are ridiculous, man. Fucking ridiculous. But you know, all in all, y'all let me know in the comments what do y'all think. Do y'all think Boots uh, um, sent a low ball offer to, to Brian Norman? Uh, do you think Brian Norman is ducking Boots? Do you think Stanley Onis is ducking Boots? Do you think that he was he he got sent a low ball offer as well, just like Brian Norman? And do you care that Brian <laughs> that, that Mario Barrios is just sliding under the radar <laughs> like he's not even a champion? It's crazy, man. But I appreciate y'all rocking me as always. Remember, with God, we can do anything. Without God, we're nothing. The doctor's out. Peace. From the hood to college, both worlds they had to meet. Six degrees between us, so cold we're about to freeze. But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat. We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets.